questions for assignment two. Uh, there were there were several of them. I'm going to tackle this one about the bobsled first. A 120th scale model of a bobsled is tested in a water tunnel at a flow velocity of 15 meters per second, and the drag force is found to be 58 newtons. What's the corresponding bobsled velocity in air? What will the drag force be in the air? And what differences exist between the model test and the prototype operation that might limit the accuracy of your predictions? So the idea here is we're testing a scale model. We're going to scale those results for drag up to the real thing. And it's going to have a correspondingly different velocity than that 15 meters per second because we should have Reynolds number similarity in the air. So let's check it out. Here's our bobsled. And there's people in it, maybe four of them. And it's moving along at 15 meters per second in water. So with a kinematic viscosity, if it's room temperature water, of about 1 times 10 to the minus 6 uh, meters squared per second. And a density of about 998 kilograms per cubic meter. And it's found that there's a drag force acting on that bobsled of 58 newtons in the prototype. So what's the corresponding bobsled velocity in the air? Well, if we want the Reynolds number of the model to be equal to the Reynolds number of the prototype, then the model is you model some characteristic length scale of the model divided by the kinematic viscosity of the model. For the prototype, U of the prototype, length of the prototype, divided by the kinematic viscosity for the prototype. Now, this is the model over here. The prototype is operating in air with a kinematic viscosity of around 1.5 times 10 to the minus 5 meter squared per second and a density of around 1.2 kilograms per cubic meter. And it has the same shape. It's just bigger. So if we want to know the corresponding velocity for the prototype we know the model velocity is 15 meters per second. The prototype will be kinematic viscosity of the prototype divided by kinematic viscosity of the model right this comes up over here times length of the model divided by length of the prototype times the velocity of the model well this is going to be prototype 1.5 times 10 to the 5, sorry, 10 to the minus 5, over 1 times 10 to the minus 6. The length scale, the model is 1 20th the size of the prototype. So we don't need to know the actual length, we just need to know that this one's 20 times bigger than this one. So it's a 1 20th scale model. So that's going to be the length of the model 1, length of the prototype 20. And the velocity of the model is 15 meters per second. So that's 15 divided by 20 times 15 will be 
15. Times 15 divided by 20 is 11.25. meters per second and that's the corresponding prototype velocity. So that's about 40 feet per second, that's about 30 miles an hour or about 50 kilometers per hour. Now the next question was what will the drag force be in the air? Well the drag force over here is 58 newtons what will the drag force be over here? Well, if we've kept the Reynolds numbers the same, the drag coefficient should be the same. So the drag coefficient in the prototype should be equal to the drag coefficient in the model. And that's going to be the force of drag in the prototype divided by one half rho of the fluid in the prototype, so density of air, prototype, u, prototype, squared, times a of the prototype, equal to force of drag on the model, divided by a half, rho of the model, u of the model squared, a of the model. Now we'd like to find out what the force of drag is on the prototype, so we're going to have to take all of this over to the top. So we get rid of the half on both sides, and we'll wind up with the force of drag in the prototype, over in the air here, equal to density of the prototype over density of the model. That's going to be a big difference, the difference between air density and water density. Velocity of the prototype squared over velocity of the model squared. Not such a big difference. And area of the prototype divided by area of the model, all times the force of drag on the model. So plugging in some numbers, that's going to be 1.2 over 998. U of the prototype, 11.25 squared divided by U of the model, 15 squared times the area of the prototype divided by the area of the model. Well, the prototype is 20 times longer, and it's 20 times wider, and it's 20 times taller. So the projected frontal area of the prototype will be 20 times as wide and 20 times as high. So it's going to be the square of the ratios. So the area of the prototype will be 20 squared over 1 squared in a ratio times the force of drag on the model was 58 newtons. So let's punch some numbers. 58 times 20 squared is 400 times 11.25 squared times 1.2 divided by 998 divided by 15 squared is equal to 15.7. So the drag on the prototype bobsled that's 20 times bigger is actually only about a quarter as much as the 120th scale model we tested. But that's mostly because 
we tested this 120th scale model in water that is almost uh, 800 times as dense as the air is. So the force is much higher because the force of drag scales with the density of the fluid that you're moving through. So 15.7 newtons is the uh, drag force that we'd expect in the air on the prototype. Finally, what differences? Well, these bobsleds, actually, they've got little runners on them somehow. And if we got the lengths on them just exactly right, we could still have geometric similarity. But we could have some geometric differences. Uh, particularly when it comes to roughness. We could also have a look at this bobsled in the water was just being pulled through the water, I assume, with no boundaries around it. Or maybe it was sitting on a floor. We're not sure what's going on there, but this bobsled that's moving in air is moving over the ice and it's also surrounded by ice. It's almost in a sort of a half pipe shape too as it goes down the hill. So if we don't have the moving floor and the moving walls, in our water tunnel to match up with what's going on in the airflow, then things are not going to be the same. Likewise, we could have some crosswinds in the real situation that aren't present in the water tunnel, any other details like that. But the one that I think is going to make the biggest difference, this moving floor and moving walls are going to be hugely important in determining the overall drag behavior.